Welcome to our discussion on uh, ECAP potentials and what it means to the field of medicine. Uh, today at the INS meeting we presented on this um, and talked about the brain and the spine and what it may mean to measure these uh, um, potentials and, and uh, we're going to first hear from the president of our German society, Dr. Jan Vesper, and his work in the brain and, and closed loop um, uh, methods. So Jan. Thank you, Jim. Um, basically, I'm quite excited about um, ECAPs, evoked compound action potentials, which for the first time give us an uh, um, idea and a robust tool which objectively can prove what we are doing with the new modulation in the brain. I believe that we have something now in our hands where we have a so-called biomarker um, for our doing to objectify um, which patient we can improve and which patient we cannot. Isn't it the same for um, spinal cord? I think it is. I think you know we'll be able to measure responses in the cord in real time with breathing, with moving, with walking, with sleeping, and, and change the device um, based on the feedback from the individualized patient. And so we may eventually be able to predict uh, outcomes of trialing and may even eliminate the need for a trial. We may be able to predict who is a responder and who is it. Um, also, long-term outcomes, avoiding tolerance, but changing the way the ECAP is measured and responded to. So I think you're right, Jan. I think we can see changes in outcomes that could be potentially amazing for the field and could be used in all devices eventually. Exactly. I, I believe that we can come up, so we have to prove, to a so-called closed-loop system where we can adapt um, the stimulation to the individual patient's needs. I agree. In, in the United States, we're going to actually measure this in, in real time in a level one study uh, where the patient's blinded, and the doctor's blinded, and the team's blinded. And we won't know if they're getting a, a normal measurement of ECAPs but no response from the device, or if they're getting this closed loop you mentioned in the spine, and that's already underway in the United States. Um, the Evoke study, and we're very excited about it, and uh, we're hopeful it will show uh, improvements. Of course, we won't know until the data's in. So, and it, since it's blinded, we'll have no idea until we get to the one-year point. So, I'm curious to learn um, how long it will take until we can prove this concept. Well, I think uh, the brain, the spine, uh, they both will be very exciting, um, and certainly I think we're on the way to proving it in the spine. Uh, or disproving it, and so in the, in the brain, I, I think that'll be a challenge for, for you and your field to, uh, to help us understand this better. In the brain, I believe that we have, for the first time, a, a tool which is so robust that we can now predict it in every patient. As long as we had this um, so-called better bands, so we knew that there's something ongoing with oscillatory networks, but in s some patients it worked and some patients not. We could not, not tell why it is. This is what we can do now. We can exactly prove in which target we are by means of those ECAPs. And this is very, it gives us a, a higher confidence. Absolutely, and so thank you for joining uh, the Dear Vesper discussion on ECAPS, and certainly I think that this is a, could be a monumental discussion because we may find in a few years that this led to amazing outcomes, um, or we may find differently. So stay tuned, and, and stay tuned with the INS and further discussions. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you.